everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great weekend to this point. Uh, whether you're working, whether you're relaxing, whether you're spending time with family, I hope that you are enjoying yourself, preparing yourself for another productive week. Remember what I say, no matter where you're at in your journey, if things aren't going the way that you would like them to go, if you are still breathing, you are still in the fight. Uh, hey, another segment of the Black Voice. Um, this is going to be a follow-up to the short I did in riding with Rick on the latest play out of Kiki Palmer's, uh, Palmer's drama with uh, her ex, uh, Darius Jackson, and more importantly, the macro elements and components of this dynamic. See, I'm not real big in celebrity gossip, but I see a lot of the behaviors I see with celebrities and a lot of the things that play out with celebrities being microcosms of much larger issues that do affect the masses uh, in ways that are normally not discussed or given any gravity because it's not associated with someone of some uh, reverence or celebrity status or uh, wealth dynamic. And so we tend to treat our problems that are plaguing us as a unit or as a collective. Uh, we tend to detract from the gravity or impact of it while it has a massive, massive influence on our ability or capacity to be able to produce what it is we say that we want, which is liberation, freedom, and power. But it has to be understood under social constructs, under behavioral dynamics, under financial and economic dynamics, and yet we fail to see it. But we will talk about it and gossip about it when it happens with a celebrity without understanding the elements and components and influences, the causality of it, and how it has a long reaching effect in our own lives. So when I talk about what's going on, it's always going to be a teaching moment. And the other day I briefly addressed the uh, new, the, uh, news about Kiki Palmer filing a restraining order against Darius Jackson, who um, is the father of their son, which I believe they, they had in February of this year. And there's been the ongoing thing with uh, how their lives have played out in the public. And unfortunately, that's part of being a celebrity is you surrender a significant part of your privacy. Um, and what would normally be um, a passing moment in the lives of many people becomes an indelible impression uh, in history because it's captured in the moment and it's plastered and it goes viral. And not everybody has a an opinion about an event that and otherwise would have gone mostly unnoticed and maybe you could probably work through. Um, the thing that actually caught my attention in the comment field from the last video is something that I definitely want to address. So I'm going to see if I can pull it up. Um, and I want to address that. And I want to address some other things uh, associated with that. And I want to be as unbiased and balanced as I possibly can because there's something to see in all of this. And as I mentioned the other day, one of the biggest problems I have with this particular discussion is that it takes something happening with Kiki Palmer before we are ready to have a discussion about intimate partner violence, intimate partner homicide and the massive impact it has on the black community that we're not discussing this in greater uh, detail and with more ferocity. Um, I've talked about this for more than a decade now. The rise in intimate partner violence and intimate partner homicide. The statistics and the studies reveal that uh, for females 15 to 44, the second leading cause of death is intimate partner homicide. And the vast majority of that is being done by same race 
partners. And so then that's an issue because that's the black man operating outside of his natural design, which is to protect. And we need to talk about that. Uh, again, uh, I did this in the other video. I made sure to uh, state that this is not an excuse or an exemption uh, for holding our women accountable for behaviors that are unbecoming, for behaviors that are outside the scope of what should be appropriate and acceptable. We have far too many of our older women co-signing antisocial behavior by younger women that does not age well. And then we want to talk about how we're being judged. So there's a lot going out there, but I want to be very clear as I was in the initial video, and that is there's absolutely no excuse and no exception for the rule that we do not put our hands as black men on black women. Our role is protector. And granted, there are some women who are making things extremely challenging, but we are not men when we try to match the energy of woman. When a woman does something that challenges you, that makes you feel disrespected, you don't match her energy with negative behavior. Your role as a leader is to move beyond it. Sometimes that means letting her go. Sometimes that means saying, maybe I misjudged who you are. It also means that, that as a leader, I know who I am. And what that means is I know what I'm willing to accept. I know what I'm looking for. And I need to find that in a woman. Trying to get a woman solely based on X, Y, Z and then thinking it's going to grow into something else is no different than a woman getting a man who's showing you that he's not going to commit, that he has tendencies to creep and thinking that over time you can change him. It's no different, men. Our goal is to seek the mate that meets us where we are and has a vision of where that is similar to where we are going because we've got to travel this journey in an ever uh, transformative and transitional type reality. We are not the same person today that we were yesterday. And the idea that because what we're feeling right now is tight and, and it's all that, uh, the idea that that's going to be enough isn't enough. What you've got to do is say, okay, is this person the person that I can see myself with? Personality, temperament, behavior. Because number one, women, if he's hostile, women, if he has wandering eyes, women, if he has a tendency to be easily triggered in anger, that's something you should be concerned with. Men, if she has this inherent need and desire to be validated by men constantly, it's something that you need to be aware of because see, one of the things that she's going to have to be willing to do once she commits to you and once you commit to her is abandon her need to have a conglomerate validation from the male species. She's going to have to accept that you're enough. Now, uh, same thing, women, what you've got to understand is He's got to be able to look at you and realize that if he's been out there in the world and he's experienced the the refined woman, the sassy woman, the about the grind woman, the woman who's great with traveling, all these different things that there's probably going to be some elements and components within your sphere that you don't meet. In other words, one of the challenges of being out in this dating world and going completely ham is that you get to fulfill every fetish and everything because there's somebody out there that wants to do what you want to do. And there's somebody else out there that wants to do this and this and this. And what you get is you never have to accept no. You never have to sit up and say, well, I'm not going to get to do that because she doesn't like that. You just go find the next person that does. The problem is, is when you settle down, you settle down with someone that is absolutely not going to check every damn box. And now you feel cheated. And that's just a part of the dynamic of how we have created this social element where we get to go freely out there and just scale. And everybody's encouraging everybody to do it. And here's another thing. You don't have to agree with me, uh, but anybody that has followed me for uh, any stretch of time will understand that I don't go on um, emotional uh, or subjective type um, feelings 
I put a lot of energy and effort into the statements I make and understanding this is what I do for a living, understanding human behavior, understanding outcomes based on human behavior, understanding social constructs, and being able to come up with ways of making things better for people as individuals and collectives and groups. But people are going to always have their, their feelings on their small um, sample of what life is about and they believe because it, it feels a certain way in that sample that's how life is and so you can't tell them anything and I get that but let me tell you something every time you're with someone this idea that you date without strings attached is absolutely ludicrous because here's how you're designed mentally and emotionally and spiritually it's okay the first date is what hey you know uh, we're gonna go out we're gonna see what's up okay uh, and you can have a bad set first date and you'll, you'll, you'll be willing to go on a second date depending on the physical attraction and other elements and components that tells you that's something special about that person. You'll go on a second date. Now, if you go on the third date, that means there's something there. There's something about that person that makes you want to be around that person, whatever that is physical, spiritual, intellect. Some people are literally sapiosexual, meaning that they get literally sexually aroused and turned on by intelligence. There are other people who are physically aroused. There are other people who are aroused by the ability of financial stability and so many other things can draw around. So there's all these things that are drawing, but whatever it is that's drawing you, if you're there on the third date, there's something that's connecting you to this person. Here's the thing. No matter how many times you say, we're just dating, this is just us filling out no strings attached this is not a monogamous relationship we are not connected every moment that you spend with that person you are opening up and sharing a part of yourself emotionally whether you want to admit it or not there is a connection being drawn you can say what you want to about it you can make up whatever rules you want to say you can pretend and do everything but the connection is made you now six months down the line you've been kicking it no strings attached all of a sudden one person decides you know what i'm ready to bounce and go do something different guess what happens both people are going to have to deal with that break and they're going to take some of that with them for a period of time until they detox from what has happened. You are carrying a person's energy. You are carrying a person's um, force and you are sharing soul ties, even if you don't sleep with a person. That's the thing. If you sleep with a person, you are definitely sharing soul ties in your such you're sharing them genetically whether you make a kid or not you're sharing them genetically but when you are spending time with a person there's a spiritual interaction there's an emotional interaction and i don't care if it's it's just fun it's an emotional interaction a matter of fact some of the things that seem real light and just fun have the highest emotional response and the more emotional the more anchored it is the more anchored it is the more of a problem it is when you try to break away from it and yet we consistently do that. And that's just an element component. But let me read what uh, Danette Mitchell wrote. She said, I would like to know more about this situation, which I'm sure I will, especially from Darius, not for justification or of an alleged domestic abuse. Right now, it seems like Kiki planned to have a baby with him and now wants to get rid of him so that she can have full custody of that baby and won't have to uh, pay him child support. It's my understanding that he has been the sole caregiver of the baby while she has been pursuing her career. This behavior nor her behavior will with Urshel does, uh, doesn't fit the typical profile of an abused woman who has an abusive partner. A lot of women in the, hold on, I'm sorry. A lot of women in an abusive relationship would fear behaving that way with another man, especially when they know it can uh, go viral in a matter of seconds. Then when he called her out about it, she did a video with Usher seemingly poking fun at Darius. I agree. We need to discuss dom domestic abuse in our community at great length on both sides. Also calling out out making false allegations if proven that have ruined many men especially black men i don't subscribe to believe all women i have written articles about domestic abuse involving women abusing their significant other same sex same sex relationships in general terms i agree with everything she's saying i'm not saying that this is the case in this situation i'm saying that uh, and this is a female. This is a black woman saying that she acknowledges that in many instances there is a strategic plan on the woman's part and it often ends with false allegations aimed at the man which puts him in a situation, where, especially black men. Anytime we get caught up in the system, we're at a disadvantage. So I get that. I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm saying based on some of the images that I've seen, 
um, it does look like he's handling her rough. Now, again, these are still images, and it could be as easily them uh, playing around, and she's taking these images now and repurposing them. And I don't want to create that narrative because I don't want to marginalize the real reality that we have a problem with intimate partner violence. What we also need to recognize here is that intimate partner violence in the black community happens about equally when it comes to gender, meaning that black women are equally as physically aggressive in relationships as black men. Where the difference comes is in outcome. A black man can be far more destructive in his physical violence just by nature than a black woman, and more black women end up dead than black men. But the nature of abuse is still there and what you got to understand is and here's what i'm talking about man when you understand that you're in a situation whether she's cheating or whether she's hitting on you whether she's verbally uh abusive or if she is disrespectful in her behavior with other men you you have to recognize what you're seeing and know enough about yourself to say this is not what i signed up for and excuse yourself from the situation because the natural force in you to exude power when you're disrespected will ultimately win over in some way you have to say you know what this is not what i signed up for and be willing to step away your role as a man as a leader is the ability to sit up and say when and where you execute this physical force of yours when and where you execute the ability to think beyond the moment you do not match the energy of a woman that's not how leadership is done you the moment you decide you're going to match the energy of a woman because she's disrespected you because she's acting out of turn based on your standards based on how you see the world the moment you do that you abdicate your role as a leader you now place yourself in direct alignment with the person you're supposed to be covering and now at this point there's no way that you can uh salvage that situation from that role and this role of leadership is not a a, a designation of superiority it is not a designation of being more important it's simply a designation of role <laughs> that has played out over time and one of the most devastating things that have hap that has happened in, in in this time and age is that we have gotten to the point where we think we can outthink nature. We think we can outthink God's design. We are now determining that we don't need one another when the very nature of our existence is dependent upon us being with one another. We have decided that we don't need it and we, we don't have the desire or the capacity to draw correlations between our decisions to not function in the way we're designed to function and the disintegration of civilization and our communities and our productivity and the functioning of our parenthood and our children. We don't draw the correlation. We don't see as as the family has declined and we're getting more and more single parent households, so has disruption, violence, frustration, and an increase in poverty. We're actually not improving. The, the wealth gap is widening. And all of these things can be looked at because we haven't created a secure environment in which we can raise our kids because everybody is centered and focused on self. We are in a society that has uh, basically co-signed narcissism. Everything is about I, 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 what I want, how I want it. I'm not happy. This doesn't work for me. And nobody is thinking about commitment. Nobody is thinking beyond themselves. Nobody is thinking about accountability and responsibility. And no, I am not suggesting in any way, shape, form, or fashion that anybody stays in a situation where you are being emotionally, physically, um, or psychologically abused, being neglected. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is every little slight provocation is coming with, I'm done. And here's the thing, ladies, if you want to know why it's becoming more and more uh, difficult to see men who are seasoned and probably at their prime to start families and get married, choosing not to, Here's why. It's because of the very thing that Danette Mitchell mentioned is that there are a number of women out there who are strategically positioning themselves 
themselves in situations to take advantage of men and in the process remove themselves you got to understand 89 percent of divorces are initiated by women now some of those divorces are absolutely necessary some of those divorces are because the dudes are violent cheaters poor managers of money a bunch of other things that you can sit up and say okay if things these things are the way they are and they're not changing i need to get out of here and you're absolutely right you need to go here's the thing men on the flip side aren't that once a man anchors himself it's hard to get us there but when we're there we love all the way we love hard and we become devastated by that and we feel violated and if we are not sure of ourselves we will act out this is not justifying the acting out I am 100% against men harming women or children or elderly. I'm absolutely 100% against us harming each other without real true provocation. If I'm not defending my family, my house, my finance, my finances and the things that matter in, to my family, I have no business harming someone because they upset me, because they said the wrong thing. Because, But here's the thing. If a man identifies something as an absolute violation, you don't. That's this is why you need to actually understand who you're dealing with because there are certain people who see disloyalty as the ultimate violation and there are people who feel like the ultimate violation is punishable by death i think that because we don't have men operating in the proper role in the home that we have a morbid and distorted view of our masculinity and manhood what we love to call toxic masculinity and i am very clear in my writing and my lecturing uh in my research that there is a difference between masculinity and toxic behavior you can't marry the two they're actually on polar opposites of the same spectrum if you see toxic behavior, it has nothing to do with masculinity. But when, when, when you attach toxicity to the term masculinity, now you weaken the very force of masculinity and anything associated with being a man now is under, under threat. Uh, he's a control freak. No, he's a protector. He needs to be able to protect you. If you're out on a thing and you have no accountability, you cannot be covered. I don't need to tell him what I'm doing. I don't need to tell him, but then I can't cover you. I, I can't tell you're missing because I don't even know where you're at. And that's a concern. Again, there are controlling men out there. There are men that they need. To, my thing is, I'm not trying to stop you from being you. I'm trying to create an environment where you are secure in being you because I need you to be the best version of yourself. I need you because there are some spiritual things that you bring to this equation that I can't reproduce. I cannot I cannot create. And there's an element of physical power, force and protection, a level of leadership and visionary reality that I bring to the table that you cannot emulate. But what happens is we take little bitty pieces of who we are and we, 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 we ride on that. We elevate that. We elevate this, this, and this because I can do that. And now that's what being a woman is. We elevate this, this, and this because I can do that. And that's what being a man is. And we lose sight of who we are as a whole and how we actually are supposed to come together and sync our uh, men, our masculine energy with the women's fin feminine energy and in the sinking of this you create this thing called synergy the synergy is a force created when you bring together more than one element of energy and force that allows us to do things that we could not otherwise do on our own and one thing that the system has done as and it has been a very very effective way they have efficaciously driven a wedge between us on a collective level where the first thing we want to blame is our is our significant others or the opposite gender and the thing is yes there are some men out there doing some absolutely horrific and uh terrible things and there are some women out there with some absolutely unacceptable behavior and the thing is we are co-signing it from both sides well if he did that she must have didn't know keep your damn hands to yourself Black 
men, we have to be willing to protect black women. Not just the one in your bed, not just your mom, not just your sisters and nieces. We need to have a sense that nothing's going to happen to a black woman on our watch. And yes, that could at times put you in harm. That's the problem. We'll be willing to die over a block we don't own, but die to protect the black woman won't do it. And we wonder why they don't trust us. Sisters, this whole idea that your body belongs to you is all good until it ages. See, the things you do at a young age doesn't age well. The things you do that put yourself out there doesn't age well, and you're wondering why. And at a time where everything you do is being captured and held and everybody can go back and look at it, it doesn't age well. Now, the truth of the matter is, uh, the one thing that I've tried not to do to my kids is, y'all kids these days and we didn't. Oh, we did. We didn't have things to capture what we did. We did it in silence. We did it in, in the dark. And just a little bit of it creeped out into the light. But we know what we did. But here's the problem. Nowadays, see, a bunch of things we got in that closet may never, ever fall out because there's no record outside of our minds and the testimonies of the other people involved. What these kids have, what's happening now, is everything. Man, we sit up and we were talking about this yesterday. You don't know when you're being recorded. People are sitting up recording you when you don't even think you're doing anything video worthy. People are recording you if they think you're interesting, if they think you're going to do something or say something that may come back and may be funny, may be this, may be that, and it might come back to bite you in the butt. So every day you've got to walk and carry yourself as the best version of yourself or how you want to be perceived. And we don't live in a world because we don't project out, we don't look out, we don't think outwardly. We're never thinking about what today's decisions and behaviors are going to age like. So we're not thinking about that. We're thinking about, man, I'm this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And I, I only render to you one little thing. A couple of years ago, they started talking about doing documentaries on Freak Nick and the Capra Beach Party. And a bunch of people who are judges now, lawyers now, uh, doctors and nurses and uh, professionals got real anxious because them children and them husbands and them wives were about to see something. But again, that's gr old grainy video that it may come out, it may not. Now everything is captured in moment and time in many instances propelled and pushed out in what? Real time. And when it goes out in real time, once that leak is taken, anybody can download it and anybody can share it in the future at any given time, even if it's removed from the original source. And so what do you have? You have something that does not age well. You have something now you're going to have to explain. And the idea that it's okay to completely present yourself in an over-sexualized way in front of another man or to another man when you're in a relationship with another man is a problem. If you think it's okay, it's a problem. But men... Let me explain something when I say that. Stop trying to parent her. Stop trying to make her behave the way you want her to behave. If that's where she's at, that's where she's at. And if it's unacceptable to you, then you don't belong there. The whole, I'm not trying to shame a woman into doing something. I'm definitely not trying to push a fortune into doing something. If you don't have the same level of standards about how you move because say i'm going to give you the same honor i'm asking of you all the way down to not having any appropriate uh uh re relations or interactions with other women uh, and i mean that in private i'm not just talking about openly i mean i'm going to give you the same level of respect i'm going to honor this thing that we're trying to build because i see the importance in it but what i'm saying is the moment that i see you're not there i can't put you there it's not my job to put you there. That's a very that's a very frustrating endeavor to try to force somebody to be something they're not, whether you're a male or a female. You're a bunch of women. Women have been trying that for years, trying to make a man be something he's not and getting frustrated, getting hurt, ending up with kids, raising back because you're trying to make him be what he is not. Learn how to observe and see what it is. Learn how to value the things that are valuable. See, we are so caught up in looks, that stuff changes over time. Now, you can take care of your body, you can eat right, and you're going to slow the aging processes, but you're going to age. Gravity is going to get you. I promise. 
And the thing is, if that's all you got, you're going to diminish. And if that's all you're looking at her or him for, you're going to diminish. And then if it's all about money, I guarantee you, if he's a real go-getter, there are going to be some rough and lean times because getting money is about putting yourself out there and taking risks. Yes, you can manage it and you can do this. But if he's a real go-getter, he's going to get out there and he's going to have some times where he needs to go all in. And that's going to put you in a lean position. And if you don't know how to manage it or if he gets knocked off his pedestal and has to climb back up, if you can't handle it, it's going to be a problem. You need to find the person that can give you the type of situation that you're looking for instead of trying to create it in somebody else because there's a, a, another form of attraction there. And he said, like, what does this got to do with Kiki? That's the point. That's a small microcosm, a small situation that is a part of a much bigger macro issue that nobody wants to talk about. And I'm talking about it in its totality. See, that's the thing. We want to get caught up in Kiki Palmer is one person. Uh, I'm not here to judge her. I'm not here to judge him. But I'll say that if he put his hands on her, he's wrong. And that's a behavior that's wrong. He's not wrong because it's him putting his hand. He's wrong because no man should be putting. And I don't think that you can sit up and say, I'm in a monogamous relationship with a guy. And I have no accountability to him to how I represent him when I go. Because I guarantee you, you are a representation of your mate. And if your representation of your mate puts a bad light on them. If, and and, and, and let's, let's back up. If, if, even if we want to get biblical, biblical. If you go back and you look at Proverbs 31, everybody talks about the virtuous woman. You go back and look at Proverbs 31 and you look at King Lemuel's mom explaining to him what a virtuous woman is. And as a part of it, it says that he is respected at the gate. Why? Because of her. That's the power of having the right woman in your life. She doesn't detract from you in what she does. She adds to you. Now, I'm not saying that the man doesn't have a responsibility. His responsibility is greater. But at the same time, this isn't about coming in, grabbing the back, sitting around, doing whatever I want to do. And I think one of the problems here is because we have commodified black men and we have put such gravity on the money element and component of our manly responsibilities, when a woman out earns a man, he's immediately emasculated. And see, that's the difference with me. I don't care what I'm making and what you're making. I'm the man. Now, I'm never going to be in a situation where I'm comfortable, where I'm being our earned, unless we in the millions, millions and whatever, you know, but just sitting up saying, I'm going to sit at home because you're doing this and I, I'm never going to be okay with that. Never, you know, that's not going to be me, uh, especially at this age in my life. It's about getting out. Now, what I would love to have is somebody that's got that same mindset that can see the drive in me and maybe sit up and say, hey, man. Hey, you need to check out my dude. My dude is doing it. Somebody that's going to be a promoter of your genius to get you where you need to go and you be the same thing for them. I'm all for that. But what I'm going to tell you is that when we rest in the commodification of black men, the moment that you meet a woman that makes more than you, if you don't know who you are, you're going to be subjugated to the role of being what you are told to be in order to stay in that situation. if Now, if you know who you are as a leader, she can't move you. And she'll get frustrated. She'll get frustrated because she's leaning on her income. She is independent. She is self-made. And my thing is, get your paper, ladies, if that's what you want to do. But understand what it comes with. Understand that there's no amount of paper that can truly deliver to you the amount of masculine energy you need to be a protector in the circle or environment in which you're operating. No amount of, of, of gun, gun training lessons, no amount of self-defense, because it's so much more than that. My brain is literally wired different than yours. My kibble components in my body create a natural force that, and when I allow it to operate, puts me in a natural position to perform the things that I'm supposed to perform. Most of it I'll just do naturally if it's not contaminated with a social idea of doing something else that does not work. Now, the thing is, you can sit up and talk about all this independence you want. You can talk about all this stuff. Guys, I can't stand women. And another thing is one of the most weakest things you can do now i'm talking to everybody but definitely i need black men to listen to me right now one of the most weakest things you can do is complain 
Complaining is an acknowledgement of helplessness. People who can change their environment don't complain about it. They change it. So when you start complaining about what women what women are doing, you are ask you are actually uh, acquiescing to the the uh, emasculation of your role in any given environment. What you have to do is stand up and take action. Sometimes you're batting your head up against a wall, but you got to keep doing it till the wall falls or you die. But you can never sit up and just whine and complain. It's nothing weaker than sitting up saying they're doing this, they're doing this. They're... I'm not saying they're not doing it. I'm saying us complaining about it doesn't change it because that's not our role. Our role is to take action. Our role is to be leaders. Our role is not to sit around and match their energy. Our role is to lay the foundation and the path and walk it out. And when you are a leader, even in the moments where you don't have money, you still lead. Now, to the thing about Kiki and Darius. There are two different sides of the argument, and it could be either or. But what I'm going to say is what I can say, whether it's either or. If he put his hands on her, he's wrong. If she's setting him up to run, you know, to basically do what Danette said is basically, I got a kid from you. I don't want to be with you anymore, but I don't want to pay you child support because I out earn you. And I've seen what happens to Mary J. I've seen what has to happen to Sherry Shepard and a couple of others. I'm not going that route, so I'm going to smudge your name. I'm going to say that you are abusive. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that. Then I'm going to get sole custody of our kids, and I'm going to tell you, don't worry about it. Kick rocks. That's wrong as well because no matter how much money you make, those kids need a father. And if he's a good father, and from what I can understand, he's been the primary caregiver to the children. So it seems that he's a good father. doesn't mean that he is, but he's been the primary caregiver. Again, to me, I'm not with those reverse roles. I think that it just automatically creates a imbalance that cannot be adapted to because we're not built men to function that way. We're going to feel lessened. We're going to feel inadequate. We're going to feel overpowered. And in some way, we're going to try to bring a balance to that negative feeling we're experiencing. And many times it comes out in the way of violence or cheating. So again, there's so much that has to be done. There's so many different things that have to be addressed, but I just wanted to come back and, and literally acknowledge that what uh, Danette shared is a part of this discussion and we don't want to talk about it. We love to dig in on men. We love to go all out. The black men are the most horrible, worst, trifling piece of shit that ever traded the planet. And the truth is, if you study, uh, if you look at the studies, black men are the most engaged fathers in America. This is a Kaiser study. This is a Kaiser study. Uh, there are multiple studies, but the Kaiser study is the most in-depth. We are the most engaged. We are most likely to pay child support. But that that's not what's being shown. We're deadbeats. We don't do anything. Uh, and what is never, ever addressed in that is we'll ask all the day, all the time, why are you not in your kid's life? Or why are you not fighting to be in your kid's life? And the question that's never or hardly ever asked is, why should I have to? Why am I having to fight for something I should auto automatically have? Why isn't she being called out because she's using the child as a pawn? And then we get into all these other things. And this is just something that comes out of what Danette pointed out and what I've spent years in researching. And then the system is used as a mechanism to perpetuate this. The kids aren't winning in any way shape, form, or fashion, by the way. The system doesn't benefit the kids. The separation doesn't benefit the kids. The kids aren't winning. Matter of fact, nobody's winning except the people who are manipulating us to be enemies with one another instead of standing and joining forces with one another. They are winning because the greatest threat to them is us in our purest form. And we can never be in our purest form 
if we're not in our purest state. And that's the thing. You can talk about it. You can get mad at it. You can sit up and say what you want. You can go into this narcissistic uh, drive of me, me, me. I can do whatever I want. And look at what it's producing. Antinomianism, the, 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 the idea of practicing and doing whatever you want comes with consequences. And this hedonistic state of mind comes with consequences. It's not, uh, you can call it sexual liberation, you can call it whatever you want to, but at the end of the day, it comes with consequences that have long-reaching effects far beyond this need to feel seen, this need to feel, do, or, or, or in, in the sense of this, this, this uh, hyper-violence in men. You're not getting respect, you're getting incarcerated. You're robbing your children of their mother and their father because you can't manage your emotions. See, it's both, it's, it's enough culpability to go on both sides, but see, nobody wants to acknowledge what they are doing. They want to do what's easy, and that's blame the other side. I think we need to have some, some coming to Jesus moment, so to speak, where we're sitting down and saying, what can I do better? What can I do better? Number one is choose better partners. You don't see me. You, you're never going to see me whining and complaining and pointing fingers about failed relationships or how things have gone in my past. I chose to be there. And so what I do is I look at myself and say, how can I be better? What can I do? What did I do? All these different things. It's not excusing anybody of anything, and it's not taking all the blame upon myself. It's being uh, true to the fact that I'm human and that I'm the common denominator in the things that happen in my life. So if I've got a trail uh, of failed relationships, I'm the only common denominator. What role did I play? And it doesn't mean I'm a bad guy, but it means that I'm doing something that I need to stop doing. And that's the things that we don't have discussions about in our lives is how did I get here? If at, at a certain point, if it's more than one person involved and you're getting the same result, you're the only common denominator. Unless everybody in your past got together at some point 25 years ago and say, look, I'm going first, you go second, I'm going, you go third, and we're just going to spend the rest of, rest of the next 10, 20 years screwing up their life. Unless that happened, then you played a role in it that you need to be accountable for. Finally, the element and component that also must be considered in this is the element in an environment you are born into. A lot of us are bringing our childhood traumas into our adult realities, and they're not playing out well. We're bringing them into our jobs. We're bringing them into our parenting. We're bringing them into our marriages, and it's playing out in a very catastrophic way because we have not dealt with that generational trauma. Anybody who's following me know that I've been writing on generational trauma for 30 years. I've lectured on it. I've talked about epigenetics. I've talked about adverse childhood experiences. I've talked about the need to heal these tra these traumas and to place them or uh, integrate these traumas into our linear timeline so they become a part of our past and not a constant threat in, of re in our daily reality. And until we do that, we are going to consistently destroy a bunch of things in our lives because we aren't confronting the trauma. And on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I want to thank you guys again. If you believe in the work that I've done over the past 30 years at the Odyssey Project, the Black Voice, Black Men Lead, uh, and a number of other projects, the research, uh, the program implementation, and therefore, please look in the description box of this video and find a way to give and support the work. We are currently working on an 18-month research project on uh, the lack of resources for severe mental psychosis among black males and females uh, and how that's playing out <clears throat> in mass incarceration uh, in the disruption of the black family nucleus and more. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here again. Thank you guys for lending me your time on today. Take care. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special 
announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Thank you.